Good morning. My name is Susan Hayward, and I would like to thank you for joining us at Parma Greece United Church of Christ at home. Because we are not meeting in our church sanctuary during the pandemic, we are offering this weekly worship service on YouTube. Also, following the service, we have an online fellowship hour at 1030 on Zoom. If you would like to participate, please go to our website, parmagreeshucc.org. Also on the website, you may submit names for the prayer list, get information on the Wednesday meditation, or leave a message on the contact page. Remember, if you need pastoral support, please call Pastor Kurt directly. It is our hope that this service and the weekly meditation provide you with some comfort and stability at this time of great uncertainty. Parma Greece United Church of Christ at Home, sharing God's love wherever we are. And now let us prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for worship. to worship our God, who speaks the words of peace we need in chaotic times. We gather to follow Jesus, who encourages us to never fear, for He is near. We gather to be filled with the Spirit, who anoints us so we can go to serve in the world. disciples, meet us in the midst of the storms of our lives. God of renewal, as you lifted Peter from the water, lift us from despair to hope, from distraction to focus, from death to life. God of the journey, you led Joseph in seeking, direct us in your way. Work out your purpose in and through our lives. We pray in the name of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, 
world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God of our present trouble and promised triumph, open our eyes to see you in the midst of our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful works and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our Old Testament lesson for today is from Genesis chapter 37, verses one through four and 12 through 28. Jacob settled in the land where his, his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Silpa, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. <clears throat> so he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer, Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. And then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness. But lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. And then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. 
Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Seeking, searching, Joseph went looking for his brothers. In today's reading from Genesis, the meaning in the Hebrew of Jacob's command to Joseph is not just to find them, but to see how they are doing. Joseph's search for his brothers, God's search for us. Our search for one another is more than just to seek and find another, but to seek and search for the other's peace, wholeness and well-being. The Hebrew interpretation of this story implies the stranger to be an angel of God who asked Joseph, what are you looking for? In other words, Joseph did not seek this on his own, but he had divine guidance. In the stranger's brief encounter, had not happened, would Joseph ever found his brothers so God's providence could unfold in salvation history? Is it ever a chance encounter for us to find our way to God's will? Do we listen if God as the stranger places guidance in our own path? The Joseph saga does not begin as a pretty picture. It is a story of hatred, prejudice, and blinding jealousy. Joseph's brothers want to kill the favored, beloved brother and destroy the heart of their father as well as the son. It is a violent story. First to murder, then to hide the deed, to throw the beloved down a well, and finally in a cruel compromise to sell him into slavery. Yet this story is far more than a tale of family dysfunction, hatred, and division. It is a story of God working in the lives of humans. Even humans that falter, fail, sin despicably and abhorrently. It is a story of divine inter intervention, salvation, history, in God's provision. The brothers, of course, had no idea that their actions would lead to their own survival. Their deeds were simply evil. Yet God, even through the evil of the world, works good and wonder. God is the restorer, the one who takes death and transforms it into resurrection life. Joseph became an instrument in God's plan of love and provision. It was because Joseph had become successful in Egypt, ensconced in a position of power, that he was able
to help his entire family when famine came. It was the kind of help that transcends knowing or understanding, but is contained in love, forgiveness, and mercy. God's help came through human hands, human love, human forgiveness. Joseph was able to overcome the human tendency to judge or reject those who had harmed him. Fear is the predominant obstacle to God using us in the world. Fear is the predominant obstacle to our own ability to have faith and trust in God's providential love in the midst of hardships. Our world is inundated by fear right now. It controls our hearts and our minds. Fear is in the crisis with the pandemic illness of those we love or ourselves, with the deaths of family or friends, with the closing of business, businesses, the loss of jobs, the loss of home, housing, with violence in the streets, distrust among nations in the world. The psalmist cries out in Psalm 69, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. In today's gospel, we hear the tale of Peter trying to walk on water. The disciples were alone in the boat. A terrible storm has arisen. Jesus was walking toward them across the water like an apparition or ghost, and they were filled with fear. The storm was very, very real. And in that small boat, they had good reason to be afraid. To see the beloved Jesus walking across the lake in the dark, in the violence of the storm, doing what was humanly impossible, must have been frightening. To try to do what is humanly impossible by ourselves without God is always frightening. Peter listens to Jesus say simply, come, and he gets out of the boat in response and defies all logic. Our boats are symbols of false security, often reflected in our bank accounts, our materialism, our huge and unnecessary houses. What is the boat in your life that you are afraid to get out of? What is the boat in your life that prevents you from following God's call to come? What is the fear that imprisons you? Peter could not walk on the water for one reason, fear. He looked around at the world, the reality of the storm, the physics of the water, the incomprehensibility of the situation, the absurdity of it all, and fear overwhelmed Peter. He began to sink. And then Peter did what we must all do. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. And the Lord took Peter by the hand. Can you remember a time when you were a child and were afraid, yet when your mom or dad took your hand, all of a sudden there was no more fear? Whenever I read this story of Matthew, these words of a popular gospel writer, Jean McClellan, come to mind. Put your, put your hand in that hand of the man who stole the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. And when we do, then we can walk on water. The water that tries to drown us the water of fear that we can rise above. 
Jesus, save us. Amen. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose presence is felt in all the sights and sounds of eye and ear, we come at this time to worship you and give you praise. Charge our being with the currents of gratitude that whatever our momentary mood or fortune, we may find cause to bless your name. We thank you for the patience that helps us bridge desire and fulfillment, for unwise prayers that went unanswered, sparing us heavy pain, for unwelcome news that led us to discover in ourselves capacities we never dreamed were there, for ancient words of scripture that blaze with light and meaning as circumstances change, for the winsomeness of Jesus that excites the trust of young and old in every generation, and for your great mercy that holds us fast even when we are hardly worth holding. Let the joy of our knowing you and sensing your presence dwell in our souls, that even in the worst of times, our hearts may sing your praise. As we look ahead to the week that lies before us, teach us what it means to live in you, rest in you, and hope in you. Let your presence fill with comfort those homes where death has come. Let your wisdom fall like gentle rain on the parched souls of all who are anxious, confused, and find life difficult. Let your warming, healing kindle, light kindle trust in those who are sick or in any way afflicted. Let your joy overcome the dolefulness of those who have forgotten how to laugh. Shape your grace around us and our innermost needs, Holy One. Give us not over to ourselves. Strive with us yet a little longer, for we love you and would serve you fully through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Go in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Christ. Step out in faith, trusting that the God who has called you is able to keep you from falling and hold you in love. May the steadfast love and faithfulness of God surround you. The grace and peace of Christ embrace you. And the Holy Spirit refresh and encourage you now and forever. Amen.